from the show floor at the Sands Expo Las Vegas. Countdown to the general session with co-hosts Jennifer Rogers and Phil Lavelle. Welcome to Countdown to the General Session. I'm Jennifer Rogers here at Hewlett Packard Enterprise Discover Las Vegas 2017. I'm going to be joined shortly by my co host, Phil Lavelle. He is down on the floor at the General Session, and we're going to be here for about the next 15 minutes, bringing Discover to you wherever you are, whether you are here in Las Vegas with us or via the web or on your mobile device. We are waiting for CEO Meg Whitman and her leadership team to take the stage at the general session. Uh, Phil and I are gonna give you some highlights before from the show floor and also a little bit of a sneak peek into what Meg Whitman and her team will be talking about during the general session, things we expect to hear from them on the uh, important key HPE areas, hybrid IT, intelligent edge, and new this year at this Discover HPE Point Next. And I'm gonna be joined here by some industry analysts who have their finger on the pulse of all things Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, Discover this year, packed as usual, lots of customers, attendees, partners, and Phil Lavelle who is down in the heart of of all of it on the floor of the general session. Phil. Yeah, hey Jen, you could probably hear the music, although it's just stop for a second, there it is again. The party well underway here at HPE Discover 2017. The real party, as it were, about to get underway on that very stage. Any moment now, we're going to be hearing from CEO Meg Whitman, her leadership team, Antonio Neri, for example, all here to talk about what's new with HPE, what's changing, how things are changing for the better, how this company is really performing and helping its customers and its businesses really advance with their change, their digital transformation. We're going to be hearing, as you say, lots about hybrid IT, the intelligent edge, HPE Point Next, Hewlett Packard Labs, the machine, big announcements about the machine, huge innovation there. Don't want to spoil it all for you, but there really is a lot to see on the show floor here at Discover 2017 Las Vegas. So much to walk around and see. If you're watching this remotely and sadly you can't be with us physically here in Las Vegas, don't worry, you're not missing out because I took a tour a little bit earlier so that I can show you exactly what we've got on offer here. It's absolutely phenomenal. Take a look. This is Hewlett Packard Enterprise Discover 2017 here in Las Vegas. This is HPE's must attend technology event where enterprises can learn how to accelerate their digital transformation in a world where everything computes. It's HPE's core belief that we live in a hybrid world. Businesses today run on a new breed of apps and data which can be created anywhere and live everywhere. At the hybrid IT showcase, enterprises will learn how to accelerate digital manufacturing, drive innovation in financial services, and deliver a new generation compute experience. The key to innovation lies at the intelligent edge of the network. The intelligent edge is powered by vast amounts of data, and enterprises that can turn that data into insights and actions will become industry leaders. By powering the intelligent edge, HPE is revolutionizing experiences for customers, workplaces, and employees. With intelligent spaces, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is enabling mobile first workplaces, creating seamless, collaborative experiences for anytime, anywhere engagement. These technologies can be used to elevate the retail experience, establish the citizen centric future city, create new experience in healthcare and deliver the intelligent workplace. The first step of any transformation is to have a vision and the expertise to make it a reality. At HPE Point Next, customers can accelerate that transformation at every stage of the journey. HPE's global Point Next team includes 25,000 IT experts spanning a range of disciplines and connected to a powerful ecosystem. HPE's proven methods provide powerful, scalable IT solutions for enterprises across every industry. So there you go, there's just some of the highlights. Really much, much more to see here. We're also hearing a lot here at HP Discover 2017 about uh, the data center infrastructure group, that billion dollar acquisition of Nimble Storage, what it means for HPE's leadership in hybrid IT and the high growth 
uh, flash storage market. Also, the purchase of SGI, and what that means for HPE's position in the high performance compute market. Now, there is a big announcement coming from DCIG. It's going to happen on that stage. I'm not allowed to tell you what it is. I can't spoil the surprise, but we have Susan Blocker from DCIG. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Don't spoil anything. <laughs> give us okay. a hint. You've got to give us a hint, All right? right? I'll give you a little bit of a hint. So, look, we're going to be making some magic happen here at Discover 2017. We're going to be talking about never before announced or even heard of levels of security that will really excite our customers, automation and intelligence that's going to be really revolutionary, and new levels of control and economics that are going to delight our customers around hybrid IT, so stay tuned. You know, people watching around the world now are going to be really, really I'm eager to see this. I'm not too much away, okay. but it's I tried. magic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll let you take your Thank seat you. because I know you've got Thank to get, get prepared. Um, so that's all to come. The magic, as Susan put it, starting very shortly on that stage. We'll have more for you in a few minutes' time, Jen. All right, thanks so much, Phil. You've got us on the edge of our seats. We want to know the surprise. Uh, I now have uh, two industry analysts with me here. I'm joined by Crawford Del Pret. He's an analyst with IDC. And Evelyn Orlick, lead HPE analyst at Forrester. So Crawford, let's start with you. Um, you've been covering this company for a very long time. You've been to many uh, Discover events. What do you think right now are the highlights for you? Yeah, well I think one of the biggest highlights is focus. Um, you can really see that uh, when you walk the show floor, this is a company that is now really focused on that journey customers are, are moving to a hybrid IT environment. So that means that you can get your resellers all aligned around what are the tools that a customer is going to need to have a successful enterprise implementation in hybrid IT. There are going to be millions of sensors and devices connected. As an enterprise, how do I create offerings that are going to allow, it, allow me to understand all that data in the Internet of Things and have the right infrastructure to support this new massive feed of data? And then finally, what are the services that I need to create those new use cases and solutions for customers? HP is focused squarely on those areas, and I think that that's new. And they're getting their partners lined up around those um, to really you know, have a selling motion in that direction. Uh, Crawford talking about the transformation of the company, and we've heard from Meg Whitman so many times about being agile, being nimble. How is that represented here at Discover? I think it means two things. First of all, the organic growth, as Crawford has mentioned, all the different products and the different solutions they've put in place, such as Synergy and many more Meg is talking about. And the other one is all the inorganic growth, which is all the acquisitions they've made. Fantastic acquisitions like SGI, Simplivity, and many others who are helping to fulfill the vision of HPE in the future of making hybrid simple and at the intelligent edge. Crawford and Elevin, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to go back to Phil. Yeah, Jed, so as you might know, HPE recently relaunched its services business. It is now HPE Point Next. And HPE Point Next is about getting the right solutions in the hands of customers, be they with the HPE ecosystem, partner systems, or really making sure that they work cohesively and businesses and, and customers can really work through and solve business problems as they come up. There are 25,000 IT professionals all around the world who are helping make this service a market leader. Lynn Malloy is VP of HPE Point Next Marketing. He's here to tell us, first of all, about the relaunch. So how's it gone? What are you guys up to right now, Finn? Well, the launch, we, uh, we launched in March, um, our new services brand, HPE Point Next, and uh, we announced a new leader, Anna Pinzuk, who we'll hear later from today. And um, the reception has been fantastic. You know, services have always been a strength at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and you know, by bringing together our consulting business and our support business, you know, we're really allowed to create, uh, we've really been able to create a seamless experience for our customers end to end, and it release a new portfolio to the market. Yeah, I mean, I saw on the, on the show floor a lot of people just crowding around the Point Next area, just Absolutely. eager to learn more. Um, let's just talk about consumption services and hybrid lighting. How is Point Next helping customers move forward their way to your salaries? Uh, yeah. Well, consumption um, and IT consumption is a really hot topic today. Everybody's talking about that in the market, and it's a place that, um, it's an area that we've been innovating for a long time in. Um, our flagship service, Flexible Capacity, has been six years in the market. It's over 300 enterprise customers today, almost a billion dollars worth of uh, business there, and it's growing really fast. We're hearing great things about the service, and you know, it's an area that we, we just purchased a cloud cruiser. Um, uh, acquired Cloud Cruiser to bring in those capabilities to improve what we can do with flexible capacity and with consumption services in general. And there's a lot more innovation to come from Hewlett Packard Enterprise on that subject. So we're just getting started. 
Fantastic. OK, Flynn, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so um, we're going to talk to Jen in just a second, but we're just going to stay with Flynn for a little bit longer. Um, OK, actually, we're not going to stay with Flynn. We're going to go back to Jen. Back to you, Jen. All right. Thank you so much, Phil. I am fortunate enough to have a customer sitting next to me at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm joined right now by Brett Ellis. Uh, Brett leads the Data Center Operations Group at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. Welcome. Oak Ridge is the largest science and energy national lab in the energy department, and they are also an HPE customer. So you have been working with HPE for just a few months, but it's part of a four-year deal. Can right. you tell us how it's going? So it's been going great. We've actually been an HPE customer for um, close to a decade now, but using the flexible capacity has just been for the past four months, and it's been a great undertaking for us. So how exactly do you guys work together? What, what's changed? So in this particular model, we're, we've um, employed HPE as a services contract to deliver a private cloud on-premise, uh, which is uh, vastly different than the boxes and wires that we were doing before. And it's enabled my staff to come up the, the stack and focus on services model. And what are you hoping is going to be the solution that is delivered? What's the end goal here? So the end goal, especially with the flexible capacity, is the ability to enable our researchers to flex up their computing needs as required with as little latency as possible so that instead of taking months or even hours to get 300 VMs up and running, we can do it almost instantly based on their needs. Brett Ellis, thank you so much, uh, with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee. Appreciate your time, and let's take it back to Phil, who has made his way to the Hewlett Packard Labs area on the show floor. All right, thanks, Jen. So we are now on the show floor here at Discovery. This is the Hewlett Packard Labs area. This is where you really come to see the future with HPE. And we're going to talk about a couple of exciting things here. We're going to talk about the machine and also longer term innovation. But we're going to start with the machine. We've got Sarah Silverthorne here who's going to talk to us about it. And you're going to tell us about this exciting milestone that you've hit. What is it and, and what, how did you hit it? Sure. Back in November of 2016, we demonstrated the first functioning prototype of the machine. Back then, it was a small scale prototype, just two nodes. Since then, the teams have been hard at work to scale the system. Now, we're thrilled to showcase the 40-node prototype of the machine. It contains 160 terabytes of fabric-attached memory, making it the largest single memory system ever built. You guys are going to be so busy. There's going to be so many people coming to see this, just to see what, it, what, it, what it's capable of. But why is memory-driven computing architecture so significant? I mean, how's it going to affect the way we tackle problems in the future? The memory-driven computing architecture will enable acceleration of existing applications through in-memory data analytics. It will also enable completely new applications that leverage persistent memory and a simplified software stack. Our results on the machine and emulation environments are already showing the enormous potential. From manufacturing to medicine, memory-driven computing architecture has the capability to transform all industries. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? Just the potential amount of uses there could be. Sarah, thank you so much for that. We're going to talk about uh, longer-term innovation now. We've got Ashkan Sayadi. And Ashkan, just to explain to us, what does emerging computing actually mean? So emerging computing is a phrase we use to refer to the new types of processors that we're developing here at Labs, such as neuromorphic computing and optical computing that are designed solving task-specific problems such as linear algebra transforms and faster computation of the tasks that are available out there today uh, that you cannot do today with traditional processors. And how will these technologies continue to fuel memory-driven computing far into the future? Well, so a big advantage of the memory-driven computing is that you no longer have to use the same kind of processor in your entire system. As long as the processor speaks the memory semantic that attaches to the fabric and you can address the large pools of memory, then you can imagine building a system that has traditional processors, neuromorphic processors, optical processors, every kind of other processor that's out there, and the applications that are running on top of it will be able to use those processors for their advantage in the specific cases to solve problems that we practically cannot solve today, and that's exciting. It's exciting to think about. Wow, well, okay, Ashka. Thank you very much. There you go, Jen. Just some of the exciting innovations here at the Hewlett Packard Labs booth here at uh, Discover 2017. More later. Meantime, though, back to you. Thanks so much, Phil. And I am back here with Crawford Del Pret of IDC and Evelyn Orlick of Forrester to wrap things up before Meg Whitman and her team take the stage. So, Evelyn, let's start with you. What do you expect to hear from Meg Whitman? Um, this industry is a very tough industry. There is a lot of demands put on enterprises today. And what I'm looking for from Meg is leadership. Really, what she's already done, making tough calls. She's going to maybe need to make a few other tough calls, 
So really, truly leadership, helping her clients to take on this hybrid world and be successful in really delivering customer obsession to their customers. Crawford, so one of the things that's new this year is HPE Point Next. Right. Will that be something that we hear Meg Whitman talking about? Absolutely. Um, I think that when, when we do surveys of our customers, what we find is that the barrier to digital transformation, the highest, that the highest percent of problem or challenge area is dealing with legacy processes. IT is complex. Using IT to re-engineer and transform your business is hard to do. Hewlett Packard with Point Next wants to make that easier for customers. They want to have customers really try to figure out how do I integrate this technology into my business practices to create new kinds of services. So that means if you're Meg, it means clarifying what part of the services business you're in and how you can help customers on that journey. That's what Point Next is really all about. I really expect to hear a lot about that. So not only is legacy something that companies are having to deal with and incorporating that, security has become a bigger and bigger issue for all of these customers. Is that something we can hear more about today as well? Hopefully, I think agile organizations need to think security right away from the beginning. So security needs to build in, be built in into the infrastructure, into how we are servicing the customers, everything from the development of the architectures and everything throughout the entire fabric. That's absolutely key. There's just many, many challenges we see with our clients. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and and I, I think in the case of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, over the last 18 months, they've divested a significant amount of their security assets. Mm -hmm. But they fully recognize that security is super important to customers. How can Hewlett Packard Enterprise bake security in to their products, have the hooks into those products with general software that's available uh, out there to create a more secure end-to-end -end enterprise experience. I think clarifying that, communicating that, and, and baking security in is really something I would expect to hear more about. Um, we were just talking to a customer sitting yep. right in sure. uh, this seat. <laughs> uh, have you been talking to customers out here on the floor? And what have you been hearing? What do you think they're interested in hearing? Um, they're interested in hearing how can HP help me on my journey toward uh, to, to building a hybrid IT infrastructure. Um, I don't want to move everything to the cloud. I have to simplify IT. And if I'm going to simplify IT, how can I do it cost effectively? Um, how can I get um, really uh, the, the right workload for the right job, whether that be in the cloud or whether that be in my, uh, my, my core infrastructure? But they, 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 they need that balance. So customers are looking for that right balance between the products, but they're also looking for how do I take technology and create new services with technology, create new revenue streams. Mm -hmm. um, that means really, that that's really the role of Point Next and the role of integrating technology into their solutions. Yes, uh, using IT not just as a cost center, but trying to get some return trying on investment there is something that yeah. we've heard about. So we've addressed some of the hybrid IT yeah. issues, Point Next, uh, but there's also Intelligent Edge. Yeah. What should we be focusing on there? I was just talking to a couple of CIOs in the pharmaceutical and the healthcare, and in that space, it isn't really about the uh, availability of servers and things, it's really about lives, life sustaining, life changing systems which help at the edge and at the core. And both of those CIOs were very interested in understanding and really developing their offerings relative to what's at the edge in terms of the data and what needs to be staying at the core and how do they develop their use cases to save lives and to help us further in smart cities. Of course, there are many other examples we've seen yeah. on the show floor. Yeah. So how do you take this sea of data that's coming right. in, yeah. as, as Evelyn mentioned, and, and, and make sense out of it? You need an incredibly resilient, uh, high capacity infrastructure yeah. to be able to do that. That's the infrastructure I was talking about before. Customers are looking for that, that right infrastructure, that balance between the cloud, between what they're going to have in their infrastructure, and then also, how do I capture this information at the edge? And all of this is against a backdrop of so much data and also speed. Right. Uh, speed is something that we hear a lot. Uh, do you think that she'll address the fact that um, customers need speed and that they're ready to deliver it? You know, I want to add something when you say speed. Speed, yes, but it needs to be at the speed of a particular business, because speed in itself doesn't help. If you are an insurance company and you need to do different quoting, a release every five minutes doesn't really help you because it might change your quoting system. So it's really important that we stress and understand that it's speed for a particular business. Speed just by itself, of course, doesn't help us only. We also need quality. 
And so automation, intelligent automation, which helps to bring these organizations together, both those who are in the business, be it the doctors or the pharmacists, and those who are actually the lab, uh, uh, enabling business technology. So it's really speed and quality, and speed at the rate of the change of the business. Uh, so Crawford, you have been to more Discovers and you can count on your hands <laughs> and your toes yeah. walking around this one. What's the coolest thing you've seen? Um, I think so far, probably the use cases around the intelligent edge. The, the, and, and, and as Evelyn was just mentioning, so how do I take IoT, how do I take all this massive amount of data coming in, and how do I make it appropriate for a specific industry? So in retail, for example, you're in a drag race. So how do I roll out solutions faster? How do I attract that customer to, to, to my uh, uh, offering? But if I'm in a smart city, I might have to really study and think about, do I have a parking problem and, or, and, and, and do I need to think about how to create services around that for my citizens or do I have a public safety problem? And how do I put sensors on light posts to be able to sense gunshots versus sense you know, some other horrible thing or not so horrible thing that happened in my infrastructure? How do I tune technology to my needs? All right, well that, uh, very cool indeed. We rack up another Discover for you. It looks like the general session is going to be getting started any moment. Uh, Meg Whitman and her leadership team will be taking the stage. We are going to be hearing about hybrid IT, intelligent edge. We're heading to the general session. see something in that countless infinity of ones and zeros. The common language of smart cars, super tankers, and sales forces swarming on the far edge of your networks and deep in your data centers, streaming through the air, animating the cloud. In a world where everything computes, we see opportunity for the enterprise and the enterprising. We see ways to win in all of this complexity to help companies and industries reinvent themselves, keep supply one step ahead of demand, mine value from chaos, and stay as relevant to their billionth user as they were to their first. We see oceans of data distilled into action through a new kind of architecture, scaling to what you want to become. Software, servers, sensors, data analytics and apps all playing better together so any space can be intelligent open can also be impenetrable. Teams can see more of their ideas realized. We see the incredible happening today and things we can't even conceive happening tomorrow. We see us all continuing to rise, linked together by a unifying vision of people, technologies, data, and strategies making possible the deepest knowledge and most brilliant achievements. Because people and businesses will thrive in a world where everything computes. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Discover 2017. It is great to be back in Las Vegas with all of you. And before I do anything else, I want to thank you for your business and I want to thank you for investing your time to be with us. You know, Discover is a showcase, of course, for Hewlett Packard Enterprises' latest solutions, our services, our products, as well as our growing ecosystem of partners. But we use Discover for another very important purpose, and that is an important part of our ongoing engagement with you. We want and need your insight and feedback here in Las Vegas, but also throughout the entire year. And we want to make sure that everything we do is focused on delivering the innovation, the value, and the business outcomes that you want most. So thank you for coming, and thank you for your feedback on an ongoing basis. So today what I thought I would do is talk about three things. First is how digital transformation, fueled by the explosion of apps and data, is driving a fast emerging world where everything computes. Second, how the real world challenges and opportunities created by this transformation align perfectly to our strategy, which is anchored squarely on hybrid IT, the intelligent edge, 
and bringing the services expertise you need to make it all happen. And then finally, how Hewlett Packard Enterprise and our ecosystem of partners are helping you accelerate innovation and importantly, time to value in an age of disruption. So let's get started. We've got a lot to cover and I think you'll find it to be a really fun and interesting afternoon. So today, there's so much to do and no time to waste. By 2025, the world we live in will be radically different. Imagine for a moment how that might look. Everything from our cars and homes to the smartphones in your pocket, to the intelligent devices that are monitoring your factory floor, to the infrastructure in your data center, almost everything around you will be connected and sharing data. Think of the possibilities if you could translate all that data into action. How would you get value and achieve new business outcomes? And we see this emerging world as one where everything computes. And in that world, your business will live or die based on technology. We see it over and over again. Outstanding business outcomes occur when you combine the right mix of breakthrough innovations with the right experience at the right time. A world where everything compute comes with tremendous opportunities and challenges. And with these opportunities and challenges in mind, we have focused our strategy on three areas that bring you the business outcomes that you need. First, we're going to help you address your, your current environment and accelerate breakthrough innovation by making hybrid IT simple. What we mean by hybrid is where applications run off-prem, they run on-prem, and more and more, they run at the edge. According to a study on hybrid IT by the Harvard Business Review, 63% of respondents say that they are pursuing a hybrid IT approach. Second, we'll be on the front lines powering the intelligent edge as your enterprise stretches from deeply connected digital workplaces to intelligently monitored, uh, monitored operations to transformative experiences for your customers. In this new world, autonomous systems will make data-driven decisions that improve profits, save lives, and enhance the world in which we live. This is so important because according to IDC, by 2019, 43% of IoT data will be analyzed at the edge. Third, with HPE Point Next, our newly branded technology services organization, we're developing new services capabilities that provide on-demand support and instant scaling to help you turn data into insight and insight into action. Again, for us, it's all about accelerating your time to value. Now, let me say a bit more about the strategy of the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise. First, we make hybrid IT simple. A key element to making hybrid IT simple is with software-defined infrastructure. Earlier this year, we started shipping HPE Synergy, the world's first composable infrastructure. Synergy is a game changer for those who are looking to deploy applications on-prem without compromise. Synergy levels the playing field with public cloud in terms of agility and cost while providing you with the control that you want. And it gives you the ability to rapidly spin up new environments. Now, we've made some strategic acquisitions in this space as well. With our hyper-converged acquisition, SimpliVity, we can deliver solutions that bring you secure, highly resilient, on-premise infrastructure at cloud economics. By bringing together HPE's best-in-class infrastructure, automation, and cloud management software with SimpliVity, we are delivering the best and most comprehensive hyper-converged offering in the market. And we're really excited about this. We're already one of the top storage vendors in the world, and earlier this year, we made our position even stronger with the acquisition of Nimble. With our portfolio now spanning 3PAR, Nimble, and SimpliVity, we'll be able to bring you all flash data centers, 
and the ability to scale up at a fraction of the cost of using public cloud. We can also cover any application need, buyer persona, deployment model, and price point. Our partner ecosystem and Pathfinder program further expands what's possible in the data center, with partners like Arista for networking and Scality for storage. We're also seeing containers move into the mainstream of the enterprise, so our partnership with Mesosphere and Docker are central to transforming the data center to be agile, cost-effective, and secure. Now, let's talk about the intelligent edge. What do we mean by the edge? The edge, quite simply, is the world outside your data center. It's where you interact with your customers, it's where you manufacture your products, it's where your employees sit, and it's where digital transformation will have the most profound impact on your business, creating new workplace experiences, transforming your operations, and creating unique and differentiated customer experiences. It's also where companies are at the most risk of being disrupted. The key word here, of course, is intelligent. Because to create these new experiences, we have to understand what's happening in real time. And that means more data. It means a lot more data. So as data volumes increase in hospitals, factories, workplaces, and retail stores, you need an entirely new set of tools to gather, process, move, and analyze that critical information that will allow you to make decisions in real time right where that data is created. We're embedding more and more intelligence at the edge, so data doesn't have to travel back and forth to the data center or to the cloud. And the reality is that often the data has to be captured and analyzed at the edge, reducing latency and risk. We do this through our Aruba product line and our edge line converge systems. So whether that is using edge line to create predictive maintenance programs in a manufacturing facility or creating new retail experiences with Aruba, these products are the tip of the spear for the emerging intelligent edge. And just to be clear, this new intelligent edge does not make your data center less important. It actually makes it more important than ever because your companies aren't going to have only one edge or a limited amount of edge devices. You will have many. So this is going to require an even greater amount of centralized computing to get the most out of your digital operations. And that is why we acquired SGI. Before we made this acquisition, HP was actually the leader in high-performance compute. Now, the integration into our portfolio of SGI takes it to an entirely new level. And customers and partners tell me they just love it. We also leverage our partner ecosystem with partners like GE Digital that help you turn insight into action at every stage of the network from the data center to the edge. Forbes recently called us the quiet giant of IoT because of the strength of our capabilities. Our focus at Energy has been on getting the solutions right and building real world environments. And we are here to help you put IoT into action for your enterprise. And finally, there is services, which matter in my view more than ever. Even more important than the right mix of technology innovation, you need a partner who can deliver the right experience for your enterprise. The right experience includes the advice and insights, the integration, and the right consumption model. The right experience means faster execution and less risk for you. HPE Point Next and our ecosystem of partners brings all this together for you based on the learnings and insights from thousands of customer interactions. You know, the biggest question that we hear over and over again about digital transformation is how. How do I start? How can I simplify my current environment? How can I move faster without adding more risk? And that's why Point Next is here, 
to help you answer the how and support and enable successful digital transformations. HPE Point Next reflects the important role of services in our company and our commitment to be services led and outcome focused when engaging with you. Point Next services are, are complemented by a growing ecosystem of the biggest SIs from all over the world, and many of them are here on the Discover show floor. This seamless combination enables HPE to deliver more value for you. And I'd like to tell you more about the work we're doing with one of our SI partners, Wipro. Wipro is a leading global technology services firm with revenues over $7.7 .7 billion, with over 1,300 clients in 27 industry segments. So please welcome my friend Abid, the CEO of Wipro. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. Thank you for having me here. Well, we are so excited to have you here. Thank you so much, and this is a fabulous gathering, so it's a privilege to be at Discover, and thank you for recognizing Wipro yesterday as the global SI of the year for 2017. Congratulations, you deserve it. Thank you. Awesome. And thank you Wipro's customers and our mutual customers in yep. the audience for your business. Yeah. So I met Abbott when he was, um, you know, he'd been maybe a week or two on the job, yes. brand new CEO of Wipro. I'd been at HP for slightly longer. And uh, we had an immediate connection about how we saw the world. So maybe, why don't you give the audience your perspective on the transformation that the industry is undergoing and how Wipro is gearing up for the change because you've really driven a big change at Wipro over the last couple of years. Absolutely. So this is a great time to be in the technology and the technology services industry because the product of most businesses is becoming technology with digital design, with cloud, with cognitive and AI, with analytics, banks are becoming branchless. Cars are becoming driverless. Manufacturing is becoming digital and smart. And IT services is becoming peopleless. So it's a huge transformation. And the way we are enabling it by not only helping customers transform, but also transforming Wipro itself. Yeah. And that's a fun journey. So the way we look at managing a customer's IT landscape and transforming it is to simplify it. And the first part of simplification is essentially elimination. Yes. Things that you don't need to do, business processes and tasks that can be eliminated, or applications that can be eliminated, or the hardware that is not required. And for that, we've made significant investments in deep domain expertise that we work very closely with customers to then identify aspects that can be eliminated. What cannot be eliminated then gets hyper-automated. Yeah. And we use cognitive technology. Wipro Homes is a platform that we use for hyper-automation and partnerships with robotic automation organizations. Just over the last one year, we've been able to hyper-automate about 12,000 people worth of work where we've been able to redeploy these people to other activities and take out productivity and deliver productivity to our customers. Yeah. What we can't eliminate and what we can't hyper-automate, we believe will move to crowdsourcing. Wipro now owns one of the world's largest crowdsourcing platforms called Topcoder. And we are re-engineering it for enterprise crowdsourcing because we do believe that a lot of enterprise work can be crowdsourced. And finally, what cannot be eliminated, what cannot be hyper-automated, which cannot be crowdsourced, <laughs> then gets done in the traditional model that we have been working on. But that too is agile and DevOps-based, which means it needs a huge reskilling of our workforce. Just last year, Wipro reskilled 61,000 developers and uh, technical folks within the company, which is a huge transformation that we are undergoing. But none of this is possible without a significant partner ecosystem, as Meg, you rightly mentioned. Yeah. After taking over as CEO, of course, I went and met the top 100 customers of Wipro in my first 180 days. But I also made it a point to meet the CEOs of our top partners, because partner ecosystem is becoming so strategic for us to work, because we believe in providing as a service model to our customers. And when I met uh, Meg, she clearly talked about her vision of hybrid IT which kind of perfectly matched what we wanted to do. Yeah. So it's been a great journey in transformation. Yeah, no, it's been great fun. It's remarkable to watch what you have done. 
So speaking of strategic alliances, I believe this is a team sport. And it actually plays to our strengths because in our DNA, we are a partnering organization, and I think so is Wipro. So maybe you can elaborate on some of the things that we're doing together in the market. You mentioned consumption-based pricing model. That's unique. But um, maybe just talk a little bit about what we're Absolutely. doing together. I'd love to talk because that is where both of us come together and deliver value to our mutual customers. So again, taking from our uh, belief in providing an as-a-service uh, model of technology consumption to our customers and make your vision of having hybrid IT and making the edge intelligent, it kind of fitted very well. And let me take a few customer examples of how we went about doing it. So let me take the example of RSA Insurance where they wanted to be able to launch their products faster in the market. Because as you said, nobody has enough time yeah. to transform. And they wanted the user experience to be great. But they had a very disparate IT infrastructure with a large number of data centers and with a large number of suppliers. And leveraging the HP stack, we were able to transform RSA insurance to be able to provide agility to them to launch their new products faster. RWE Energy and Utilities where everything is getting smart in the energy and utility work, world, where not only devices are talking to people, but devices are talking to devices. And to enable IoT for them and making them smart, we again leveraged the HP stack to be able to provide them a scalable IT infrastructure, which enables them to provide better services to their end users and consumers. And not only do that, but also reduce their IT real estate by about 50% and save 25% cost in doing so. Right here in North America for the Toronto airport, one of mm -hmm. the largest airline hubs, we're leveraging the intelligent hub and the hybrid IT, again in partnership with HP on the entire HP stack, to be able to provide a passenger experience right from the home when a passenger leaves till the passenger takes off in an airplane by providing a seamless experience. In doing that, not only are we making their IT infrastructure reliable and scalable, but also very variable, because the passenger traffic is very seasonal, and they have to go through the peaks and troughs of uh, travel seasons. In doing that, we are also enabling to improve their per passenger revenue that they are able to get through the retail. So it's a complete uh, a hybrid IT and intelligent edge that we are leveraging to transform that and helping them accelerate that transformation to make them a big uh, and successful pass, uh, hub to deliver passenger experiences. But the one that is very interesting for me, and I've been personally involved with Asa Abloy. We all know this company producing brass locks and metal keys. <laughs> Their business is completely changing because locks are becoming electronic and keys are becoming the smartphone. Yeah. And for that, their IT infrastructure is not just about running their corporate systems, but it is about running their core product. It is about opening millions of times a day locks and keys all over the world. Yeah. And again, in partnership with HP, we've deployed a complete HP stack to be able to enable them to provide a very reliable and secure hybrid cloud in, on the boundaryless data center, which is the Wipro offering, integrating the HP a uh, hybrid IT offering to be able to deliver transformation to them. So this is some of the examples of the customers that we Yeah, they're, they're great from. examples. I mean, particularly on the Toronto airport, you know, we were like this the entire time and it, and it worked out really well. So great. Now, we made an exciting announcement about a joint go-to-market. Maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit. Absolutely. So, Meg, again, thank you for challenging your team. I always tell Meg that she has a magic wand that she can uh, <laughs> wave and, you know, things change. And one of the things that, as I said, we believe in is a, as a service uh, consumption of technology by our customers. But when I look at our entire value chain, there, were, there is still a lot of technology providers who provide on a CapEx basis licenses or uh, hardware. And that kind of creates an inefficiency in the value chain. What Wipro and HP have been able to do together is work on a flex capacity model which actually enables us to truly provide variable pricing on a as-a-service basis, pay by the drink, to our customer and have that benefit all through our value chain through HP investing not only in technology but a business model that supports that. So I'm very excited yeah. about that and we're already seeing great customer traction. 
Well, I think he makes a very good point. There is technology innovation, and then there is business model innovation. And this flex capacity service is actually business model innovation, which I think in our world is as important. So give Abbott a round of applause. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing with us. Thank you. So now let's talk about the problems we can solve and the outcomes we can provide through the right mix and the right experiences. And to show you more of what we mean, let's watch a video brought to you by HPE Point Next. A world where everything computes requires hybrid IT. Billions of different apps and data created and living in the core of the data center, in the cloud, and at the edge. How do you solve the complexity of a hybrid, multi-cloud reality? 53% of enterprises have or are considering bringing their workloads back on premises. The biggest reasons? Cost, performance, and control. At the same time, innovation for the data center hasn't stood still. Composability, hyper-converged, containers, and pay-per-use consumption are leveling the playing field for enterprise IT. HPE Point Next helps you take advantage of it all to define your right mix for your unique strategy. Power your right mix with software-defined infrastructure. Optimize the right experience with flexible consumption and service providers. Let us help you make hybrid IT simple. So as you just saw, we see a world where hybrid will be the dominant strategy for most of you. The experts from Point Next and our partner ecosystem are living this reality every day with you and bringing you insights to make it simple. Now we've been talking about how we increasingly see a world where hybrid, um, the trend is actually fueling the emergence of the software-defined innovation and driving new ways to easily purchase and consume IT services. And while we keep hearing the hype that everything is moving to the public cloud, it's just not happening. And as you just saw in that last video, according to IDC, 53% of enterprises have or are considering bringing their workloads back on-prem. Public cloud is absolutely the right choice for certain applications and certain use cases, and it's part of the right mix for hybrid IT. Simplicity, time to deploy, and cost is what made the public cloud so popular. But many customers have reached a point where they're now asking us to help them optimize in a hybrid environment. And once they get to a certain point with the public cloud, they essentially hit what we call the cloud cliff, where either for reasons of control, security, performance, or cost, the platform they went with is no longer the best option. But they don't want to just unplug. They want to scale to a hybrid environment that's developer-friendly and gives their business the security and control that they need at the right total cost of ownership. So last year, we talked about Dropbox. They're a great example of a born-in-the-cloud company driven to the edge of the cloud cliff, only to turn back before it was too late. Migrating to an on-prem private cloud solution has not, help, has not only helped Dropbox scale up, but it, interestingly, it has driven down their costs. The company has been able to retain flexibility and accelerate enterprise-level security and scalability and make its costs more predictable and amortize those costs over time. Dropbox is now cash flow positive, a key objective in its maturation as a business, as well as positioned to accommodate a lot faster growth in the enterprise market. Another company born in the cloud that is moving to a hybrid model is Smartsheet the world's leading SaaS platform for managing and automating collaborative work. Smartsheet is growing fast. However, as it matured, Smartsheet realized that it needed more control over its infrastructure to support improved planning. Its cloud-based business model was also becoming increasingly expensive. And this is a concern in particular because Smartsheet uses a freemium model 
to win over paying subscribers. So when the company considered moving to a hybrid IT model, it wrestled with another set of challenges. First, the sheer complexity of the migration. Second, Smartsheet also needed to fund the transition without cannibalizing its investments in other areas. And finally, it needed to manage both operations and the retiring and retiring the cloud environment and a new on-prem build without adversely impacting its business. So to make this happen, Smartsheet partnered with HPE to devise a technology and a consumption strategy to accelerate growth. Through the model, HPE pre-provisions infrastructure and delivered it to Smartsheet. Smartsheet installs, configures, and tests the equipment, but only begins paying for it once it's poised to become revenue generating. In my view, that is the perfect example of the right mix of innovation meeting the right experience. Now, there's another driver making hybrid IT popular. Data center innovation hasn't stood still. For example, our own Apollo servers are adding power and speed at an unprecedented rate, while HPE Synergy has made it easy to compose bare metal hardware as a pool of resources that resemble the public cloud. Integration with Mesosphere, Docker, and Chef allow you to deploy new applications quickly, efficiently, and at a lower cost. With flexible capacity, our hybrid IT as a service solution that Abbott just talked about, we can give you the, current, the consumption experience of a public cloud with the control and confidence that only on-prem provides. Now, when the transition to hybrid is done right, the results can be amazing, as many of our customers are finding out. And let me show you one story of a customer who's made the move to hybrid. You know, at Merck, every day we wake up and it's a race to find a cure. It's a race to find a way to prevent a disease. That's what motivates us. And that race requires us to deliver faster and faster. Given the dependency that patients have on us, we need to be up all the time. One could imagine that the sciences are always advancing, which requires greater and greater horsepower, greater and greater computation and storage. The idea that we would not deliver medicines because some information technology capability stopped running is just unacceptable, and that has to be factored into how we think about the computing and storage capabilities we provide for the company. We're trying to help Merck attack the biggest problems in the world by giving them the right tools and technology to solve those problems. Quality and capability and speed are certainly very critical aspects, as well as security, given the type of information that we manage and handle. Many would like to think that things can just be served from the cloud, and the cloud certainly plays an important role. We really have an organization that needs to move very quickly in delivering that capability. I'm not one that believes that it's all cloud or all in. I believe it will be a hybrid as we go forward. We quickly recognize that Point Next could come in and provide a transformation modernization program that's all encompassing using converged systems. The ability to instantly deploy that infrastructure on-premise or off-premise if necessary uh, really gives us the ultimate flexibility to satisfy whatever our scientists are seeking. That future of scientific information management, customer information management, bring a distinctive advantage for Merck. We are able to lower our operating costs, uh, but also respond to our business faster and with greater quality going forward. As I think through that cultural transformation that we're undergoing, I know that uh, my architects and my technologists love the idea of the flexibility that converged infrastructure gives them. And what keeps me energized every day is really the patients we serve, uh, knowing that I have played some part in helping to cure and prevent disease around the globe. And I know here at Merck, we look forward to working with HPE and realizing that through our partnership and applying it to life sciences, we will find more cures to the diseases that plague society. So please welcome to the stage, President of the Emerging Businesses and Global CIO at Merck, Clark Gulistani.
thank you for coming. I, I remember when I asked you when I was in your office, and so thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it, and congratulations on your transformation to hybrid IT. It's really remarkable. Thank you, Meg, for having us, and thank you, everyone, for listening to our story. We're pretty proud of the work that, uh, that we're, we're undertaking and getting done. So can you tell us a little bit more about your transition to hybrid? What did you have to do? How did you make the decision? And what was the journey actually like? So when I think about that transition to hybrid, uh, we, you think about what Merck does in Inventing for Life, we're constantly needing to drive greater and greater computing power. But at the same time, every dollar we spend in IT is money that we're not putting into R&D. Right. So driving to that converged infrastructure is absolutely critical. We actually went through a complete analysis of what it would mean to look going to the cloud, what it would mean to bring it on premise. And when you think about our business with regulatory constraints, privacy, and also cost, which is very important for us, it really drove to a converged infrastructure solution on premise. I remember that examination that you went through. <laughs> we were very, part, very much part of that examination. So why didn't you choose to spin up a whole bunch of new services on the public cloud? Obviously, you know, that was an option, but tell us about, I mean, it had to do obviously with regulatory and other things, but tell us more about that. Yeah, it, it, it certainly regulatory plays in, privacy, the type of information that we handle is, is so critical that the idea of it being in the public cloud really uh, is something that uh, concerns us. But even more importantly, it comes down to the operations. The idea that we could be down for a day yeah. is unacceptable. Matter of fact, when we're down for a couple of hours, I hear about it pretty quickly. My infrastructure team hears about it pretty quickly. The idea that we would not deliver medicines potentially around the globe to patients that require that is something that yeah. we just can't conceive of. So putting it in the cloud really is not an option for us. We need to be up all the time, every day. Yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the business outcomes that you've received so far. Obviously cost, agility, but talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so the agility is really important, especially when you think about the research environment. Uh, researchers are incredibly hungry for more computation and more storage. They never can get enough, uh, <laughs> but it, it com comes in waves. So that flexibility to be able to move in the infrastructure is absolutely uh, incredibly important to be very dynamic and very quick. Uh, when I think about what we've achieved so far, that giving that flexibility, but also tremendous cost savings, which again goes to R&D. So getting that balance between regulatory operations and uptime and cost is a critical equation for us, and we've really been able to accomplish it so far. Yeah. Well, congratulations. It's a fantastic story, and I think you're a model for the industry. So thank you for coming. It's great. Give Clark a round of applause. Thanks, Megan. Thank you for the partnership. Take care. So these are great stories. I mean, Merck is transforming its business by embracing hybrid IT. Wipro with HPE Point Next is bringing IT consumption models to our joint customers. Even cloud native companies like Dropbox and Smartsheet are embracing the hybrid model. Profiting from these shifts won't be easy, but it is possible with the right hybrid IT platform. So to tell you more about what we're doing and what it means for you, I'd like to invite Antonio Neri onto the stage. Antonio. Thank you, Meg. Hello, everyone. It is great to be here with you in Las Vegas. Hybrid IT is becoming the new normal for more and more customers. Everything we do at HPE is focused on helping you find the right mix of traditional IT, public, and private cloud for your apps and data. With the right mix of IT in place, you can accelerate innovation and time to value across your enterprise. But without a doubt, the biggest challenge, the challenge that is the complexity. The good news is we have learned a lot in our engagement with you. The consistent feedback is we need to make hybrid IT simple. At HPE, we do this in three ways. First, we can help you define the right mix for your organization. We do this by bringing the right people and expertise to the table through our HP Point Next and our partner ecosystem. Next, we power your right mix with our industry-leading innovation and ecosystem. We are accelerating our engine to provide the infrastructure foundation you need 
for your business, and we are delivering new compute architectures with more agility and security than ever before. With HPE, you also get best-in-class software-defined intelligence. This makes your infrastructure better and gives you the ability to compose resources and services anywhere as you develop, govern, and scale your enterprise applications. And we enable you to manage your multi-cloud environments more effectively, providing better business insight across your entire IT landscape. And finally, we can optimize your right mix, ensuring that your experience is the best possible one for you. We optimize your mix through our best-in-class consumption and delivery models. Our flexible consumption offerings give you the freedom to scale up and down based on your need. And you only pay what you actually use. With Dell, for example, you don't get nearly the capacity capabilities we can offer. And that limits your flexibility. In addition, we are expanding our optimized delivery options through our world-class service provider program or, and also our Cloud 28 Plus community. We are also investing in deep relationships with Microsoft Azure to give you more choice. So the bottom line, however you want to consume your IT, we can make it happen for you. Now, I want to dive a little deeper in each of these uh, specific areas. Let's start on how HPE people and expertise can help you define the right mix for your business. Every enterprise has its own needs and goals when it comes to defining a long-term roadmap. Your first step in any transformation is to have a clear vision, a plan to get there, and the right advisor with the right expertise to bring it all together. At HPE, we are committed to be the trusted advisor as you said, to transform your business. We are proven and we understand what you're trying to accomplish. We are there every step of the way with you. And that's why we launched HP Point Next, a newly branded services division. HP Point Next is a critical part of our strategy to help customers like you transform your business in today's hybrid IT world. Through our advisory and transformation capabilities, as well as our professional and operational services, we provide a complete experience that extends from the first consultation through the full life cycle of your solution. And when we combine those offerings with HP broad and diverse ecosystem of technology partners, channel partners, and system integrators like DXC, which we just formed, Accenture, Deloitte, Wipro, and so on, we actually have the right tools at our disposal to deliver the business outcomes you need. Now, to tell you more about our HP Point Next capabilities is our new leader of the business, Anna Pinzog. So I would like to bring her out on the floor. She's go to the floor to talk about Anna, how we're gonna do this. Anna, over to you. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Pinza coming to you from the HPE Point Next Pavilion in the Transformation Zone. This is my first Discover and I'm thrilled to be here. We've had an exciting year. In fact, a few months ago, we rebranded and relaunched our technology services business as HPE Point Next. Now we're all about delivering outcomes, leveraging our strength in hybrid IT as well as our expertise in the rapidly growing intelligent edge. We can help you define your right mix and help you consume IT over time. We have built our portfolio to offer a seamless services experience across the IT lifecycle. Advisory and transformational services are the tip of the spear, helping you build a roadmap for your digital transformation. With our professional services, we work with you to design and implement the right solution, leveraging our technologies as well as our partners. Finally, our operational capabilities support the solution and help you consume IT over time and deliver the outcomes you expect. 
And now I'm going to walk you over to the customer experience wall. I'm now standing in front of our customer wall and behind me are just a few of the thousands of customers we have helped on their transformation journeys. For example, the Auto Group provides IT infrastructure for many brands that you're familiar with, such as Crate and & Barrel and Land of Nod. We worked with them to develop their transformation roadmap, and today Auto Group's new infrastructure services are provisioned 90% faster, and their costs were reduced by 40%. Please drop by the Point Next Pavilion. Talk with our experts. Sign up for a transformation workshop. Oh, and by the way, be sure to come to my spotlight session tomorrow morning. Now back to you, Antonio. Thanks, Anna. I can't tell you how excited I am about HP Point X services team. I had the privilege to run this organization. Um, we have more than 25,000 experts that can help you in the transformation journey, whatever that looks for you. So that's how we help you define the right mix. Now, let's talk about how we power that right mix with the HP Innovation Portfolio we are bringing to the market that's designed to help you with the best hybrid IT environment. Software-defined infrastructure is the key here. It is truly the foundation of for how you run your business. And HP is a leader across server, storage, and networking markets. This has been the case for years. If we maintain that leadership through one of our core value, which is innovation, innovation at the core. Innovation is our HP DNA, and we are accelerating our engine to continue to provide you with the best solution in the market today. But we are not innovating just to innovate. We are laser focused on innovating against the strategy that we have laid out for HPE. Everything we do, everything we do, whether it's by acquisition or organic innovation, accelerates our strategy. With our organic innovations like Synergy, key acquisitions like SGI, Simplivity, or Nimble Storage, and strategic go-to-market partnership with companies like Arista Networking, we offer the most complete software-defined architecture portfolio today and we continue to deliver. This week, we have taken a big step forward in modernizing our compute and storage portfolio with an incredible set of exciting announcements. And here to tell you more about it is the head of the HPE Data Center Infrastructure Group, Alan Andrioli. Alan? It's wonderful to be here with, uh, with all of you, our customers. Uh, we only exist because of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are committed to serve you with the very best solutions on the market. Once upon a time, we invent invented the server market, remember? Over 25 years, we have sold over 40 million servers. We have led the market for 81 quarters with 30% market share. We are the leaders because of you. And this is why we work even harder to continue to bring new value to your business in the future. So after the immense success of Gen 9, which most of you in this room are using, I'm sure, we ask ourselves, what can we do now? What can we do even better for you in the future? What is really top of mind for you, our customers? So we talk to a lot of you. We ask you. And you told us that you need to protect and secure your business and your data. You need a breakthrough in server security. You told us that the trade-off between on-prem and off-prem is too complex. You need less compromise. You need more agility. 
You want to make hybrid IT simple, simpler. You told us that your business model is shifting away from CapEx. You need more flexibility in the way you consume it. You need your IT on demand and in your full control. And let me tell you, we have listened. Thank you for your input. So for the last two years, we have refocused our innovation machine to deliver an all new compute experience across these three super critical areas. Security, agility, and economic control. And the result is awesome. We are so proud today to announce our next generation of servers, Gen 10. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. It's a breakthrough. We have taken compute to new heights. As we listen to your feedback, the most critical concern that you highlighted to us about your business is cyber threat. Let's roll a video first that illustrates why this is top of mind for you. Every 24 hours, there are 720 million cyber attacks. More than half of these breaches occur inside the firewall at the firmware level. These attacks are no longer only focused on stealing your data, they can shut down your business. Technology must evolve to meet the escalating threats these attacks pose to your business. The days of protecting your business from the perimeter are over. You cannot afford to make security compromises. Neither can your business. Isn't it time to find a partner that gives you the confidence to accelerate your business in a world of evolving security threats? Security number one. We know that securing your data is the most important thing for you. So let me start with the breaking news. With Gen 10, we have definitely created the world's most secure industry standard server. The world's most secure industry standard server. And that's 100% true. How can we make this claim? I will try to explain it to you now how we did it. But then let me start at the beginning. At HPE, we are the only company that develops our own silicon. Other vendors don't do that. In each Gen 10 server, we have created a unique individual finger, uh, finger trip, fingertip for the silicon. Your server will not boot unless the firmware matches this print. It is just locked end to end. We are the only vendor who can do this. Also, we have embedded proactive detection and recovery. Your server has been turned into your own active spy. Every day, it scans millions of lines of code to detect any potential malware. Then we decided to apply advanced machine learning to identify any malicious behavior. We use the technology from our Niara acquisition. You can think of it this way. The system endlessly trains itself and learns again and again. It analyzes patterns to identify suspicious activity and informs you if there is a threat so you don't have to be paranoid anymore. Finally, it's all about life cycle of the data. Security is a long journey. We have even planned for the grave. So when your server is being disposed of, its embedded data cannot be reconstructed or retrieved any longer. We will protect it forever. These developments are more than two years in the making for thousands of our engineers. This means that not only do we have the most secure industry standard server, 
but also that none of our competitors will be possibly able to catch up. But this is not all. Security is not the only area where we have made great strides. As I mentioned earlier, Gen 10 is also a breakthrough in agility and in economic control. So, agility. What have we done here? We have minimized manual operations. We have taken uh, our all-new ILO 5, which is an embedded firmware, an industry standard as well, and we have automated maintenance updates. Then we have accelerated data-centric applications, which are now most of the applications that you are running on-prem, and we have taken our persist persistent memory innovation to the next level, to the terabyte scale. Then we have managed to automate application deployments, which is time consuming for your people in the data center. So we have built provisioning templates in our OneView 3.1. Finally, we found a way to uniquely optimize the performance to your specific workloads. We have invented intelligent system tuning. What this does is that it optimizes a new capability that Intel CPUs will have to tune their clock speed for different levels of performance. We have en en enabled to domesticate this change in speed, which basically gives in your server a seamless turbo. Last but not least, remember security, agility, economic control, economic control. This means that nothing should happen to your balance sheet or to your PL that you couldn't predict. Not only should you pay for what you buy or for what you use, you should be the boss. And so we don't want you to be suddenly surprised with a steep invoice that comes from someone once you are locked into this someone else architecture. We want you to be in control. And therefore, it means that there should be no penalty to your usage, up or down. Yes, even if your usage goes down, we want the reduction to follow accordingly. We have put you in charge and with full transparency. Also, we've added capacity care service so that you can manage for you and help you anticipate the movements of your capacity so that it turns into not only a financial benefit, but a full, true service. And finally, when you talk about new generation, new technologies, new innovations, it's all good, but it costs money. You have to invest. And so we decided to find a way to make the transition from Gen 9 to Gen 10 super easy for you, seamless. So you can upgrade to Gen 10 with no increase in your payments. Really, I could keep going on and on with more Gen 10 innovations because this is really so exciting. In such a big milestone for the industry, we are making a big step forward. I am sure that you will feel it soon, too, when you start to see Gen 10. But in summary, with the world's most secure industry standout servers, we wanted to empower you to build your business without fear. And I really believe that we did it. Please come to my spotlight session at 4.30, half an hour after this event in Theater 5. Uh, I look forward to telling you more with my team about Gen 10 and other hybrid IT innovations. Thank you so much again for your business, for your wonderful loyalty, and enjoy your time in Vegas. Thank you, Alan. As the head of the enterprise group, I cannot tell you how proud I am to represent the thousands of engineers who have been working on this innovation. I also had the opportunity to lead the server team, and I can tell you it's the best in the industry. This is what we do. This is what we do for you. Bring innovation against the toughest problem. And now HP offers the world's most secure industry standard server on the planet. Let me say it again. This is the most secure industry standard server on the planet, period, end of story. And you should be excited about how you can leverage that to protect your enterprise. And by the way, 
This is a, a distinction has been certified by the National Institute of Standard and Technology. It's not just us making the claim. We have several certifications and more than 50,000 hours of testing. It is an accomplishment that I am personally proud of it, but I know our engineering community is proud of it. So congratulations to the team again. You know, customers, both enterprise and in the public sector, rely on us, and that's our responsibility. And at the end of the day, no other vendor comes even close, close to deliver that innovation to you. No one. So now, as you can see, we are aggressively innovating to ensure our infrastructure solutions continue to be the best in the market. Case in point, two weeks ago, we announced our all-new flash storage portfolio. This includes built-in data protection and cloud connectivity to complement what you just heard from Alan. Whether it's from 3PAR to MSA to our nimble storage acquisition, we are helping customers establish an all-flash foundation for hybrid IT. These advancements are just a few examples of our innovation we are bringing to our infrastructure platform portfolio. But on top of that, infrastructure, actually you need software-defined intelligence. This is critical because it allows you to seamlessly compose your infrastructure. It actually simplifies and accelerates the delivery of new apps, services, and insights across your business. With HPE software-defined solutions, you can rapidly, rapidly execute ideas to deliver value faster. We can leverage you can leverage the power of the technology and the innovation and streamline operations. And you can balance the need to manage speed and cost without compromising governance and control. All across your unique environment, whether it's on-premises, in the cloud, or a mix of both. We have made great strides in these areas over the last few years. Few years. Solutions like HP OneView, hyperconverge offerings, and of course, HP Synergy changed the game for all of you. These solutions deliver amazing outcomes in terms of agility and time to value. One customer who is taking full advantage of HP Synergy and true composable infrastructure is actually DreamWorks. So instead of hearing from me, what we don't hear directly from the customer and what they are experiencing with HP Synergy. DreamWorks Animation is the home to the best filmmakers, storytellers, and artists on the planet. When you're making a CG animated film, every blade of grass, every leaf on a tree has to be geometrically modeled, shaded, textured, composited. So by the time we're done making just one movie, we've typically crafted over half a billion digital files. We have different workflows and demands on our infrastructure that are gonna start and stop. The data analytics behind that to be able to react to changes of workflow, to allocate more bandwidth, more storage, more compute, presented a huge challenge to us. Hewlett Packard Enterprise is helping us craft an infrastructure that can handle that amount of compute and storage need across our entire enterprise. HPE Synergy is quite simply a combination of engineered hardware and software that allows you to access your infrastructure in a composable fashion and as code. We can stand it up, we can apply it to different workflows, different configurations, and when that workflow is no longer needed, we can take that down and apply it to a different one. How to Train Your Dragon 3 may need X amount of render resource. Trolls 2 may need Y amount of resource at the same time, and sometimes you may not have enough resource to allocate to both. The Synergy composability allows us to move that resource from one to the other seamlessly. And if you can do that, you can drive efficiency into the use of technology in your organization and be able to support properly uh, the artists that are so important to making these films. When we look at solutions like Synergy, it really tells us that Hewlett Packard Enterprise understands how businesses need to work, that we need to be agile and quick in our decision making and provisioning for our films. We can collaborate very freely with the Point Next team and influence what goes into new versions of the product. The ability to actually manipulate 30,000 cores of rendering that can be deployed as anything at any time through Synergy is going to give us a ton of flexibility going forward. 
We're wanting a landscape that's as agile and scalable as we can possibly make it. We want to take advantage of our filmmakers' dreams and imaginations, and Hewlett Packard Enterprise is helping us do that. Thank you for, to DreamWorks for helping us innovate. It's amazing when you can bring technology to empower creativity and genuity. You can see the experience that it can deliver. Customer su successes like that is what really drives HPE. Now, to tell you more about our momento with HP Software Defined Solutions, please welcome Rick Lewis, the head of our Software Defined and Cloud Group. Rick is actually joining us from the floor. Over to you, Rick. Thanks, Antonio. Yes, indeed, we have a lot of momentum in our Software Defined products. In the hyperconverged space, we acquired SimpliVity in February and are delivering the world's best hyperconverged platform as an HP appliance worldwide. The customer adoption is outpacing our optimistic projections and is the only hyperconverged platform in the industry that guarantees performance, simplicity, and availability. Now let's talk about the impressive momentum we're seeing with HPE Synergy, the industry's first composable infrastructure. Synergy is a game-changing technology and an ideal building block for private cloud solutions with the speed, agility, and even the economics that can outperform the public cloud. And for many customers, Synergy is the perfect replacement for most traditional blades and rack use cases with better performance and lower cost. You can start there and grow with a new architecture built for your future. But we're not stopping there. We're extending our composable strategy from composing infrastructure to composing workloads and applications across your data center and public clouds. Here at Discover Vegas, we're giving you a sneak peek at this exciting new hybrid IT management platform. It's something we call Project Newstack. Newstack breaks the mold of traditional cloud solutions with a simple, scalable appliance-like experience and a unified control plane which manages across your entire hybrid estate. Let's take a look. Introducing HPE Project Newstack, the first platform designed for seamless composition of workloads across the hybrid IT estate. Project Newstack provides a unified control plane, consolidating IT operations, developer tools, and business analytics in a single collaborative platform. Line of business executives have a dashboard view to optimize usage, performance, and cost analytics across private cloud, public cloud, and traditional IT. The built-in self-service marketplace gives developers instant access to the tools and resources they need. It provides a platform for frictionless app development. IT managers are empowered to act as service providers to the business, rapidly deploying private cloud, public cloud, and traditional IT resources for line of business and developers. And built-in intelligence simplifies management while optimizing network health, performance, and cost. HPE Project Newstack is built from the ground up for hybrid IT. It's designed to bring collaboration across IT management, line of business, and developers to accelerate digital transformation. Project Newstack is incredibly exciting. It's a powerful open platform with a very simple interface that gives business breakthrough capability and agility. And as you can see, we are deep into development and you are the first to get a glimpse. We'll have Lighthouse Beta customers on Project Newstack in the fall. I invite everyone to come out to the hybrid IT section of the show floor to learn more about HPE SimpliVity, HPE Synergy Composable Infrastructure, and the power of the HPE Project Newstack platform. Thank you, Rick. I can tell you, I get excited about things, many things in life, but I tell you, Project New Stack is going to change everything. It's about how we make hybrid IT simple. And that's just a snapshot of some of what the innovation we are bringing to the market to power your mix. So now, let's move on how we optimize your mix with the industry best consumption and delivery models. We bring all these together to deliver the best experience for you. Every customer I talk to is looking for flexibility in terms of how they consume IT. You have told us you want innovative ways to fund your transformation and to rethink IT investment as well as your consumption strategies. You also want as a service experience, but on-prem and under your control. And more and more frequently, you want as a service experience off-prem 
but without the compromises that come with the public cloud. HP has a leading solution to help across all these areas. We offer a range of financial services like accelerated migration to monetize in-place assets and investments in new IT, so you can free up investment in new IT. We also offer asset recovery and transition services to help you manage your legacy environment. And we offer our leading flexible capacity services, which effectively enable you to transition from asset ownership to pay-per-use with the security and the control of on-prem. You should think about this, honestly, as a hybrid IT as a service. Recently, you know, Dell has been talking about flexible IT consumption, but when you look under the covers, really, what they deliver are payment structure. What they really forgot is the flex. The problem of excess capacity still remains. Only HP flexible capacity delivers a real pay-per-use experience with active capacity management. What this means for you, is means you only pay what you actually use and you can save up to 38%. Think about it, up to 38%. We already have a six year lead in this space and we are not standing still. And for those of you who are looking to place workloads or consume services from on-prem, off-prem resources, sources, we have what we call the HP Partner Ready for Service Provider Program, as well as our Cloud 28 Plus community. Through these programs, actually, you can get in touch with a select group of partners providing infrastructure, platforms, and application as a service offering ba those offerings based on HPE infrastructure. So you get both. And many of these partners are located near you, actually, in your close vicinity, whereas in your region or country, which is actually is a great advantage. So that's an overview of how we are making hybrid IT simple. With HP Point X and our partner ecosystem, we bring the right people to define the right mix for you. Our industry-leading software-defined infrastructure solutions power your right mix. And with our consumption and delivery models, we deliver the best optimized experience for you. When we make hybrid IT simple, you achieve terrific outcomes. Outcomes that deliver value to your business faster than ever before. So during my presentation here so far, we have been focused on operations happening at the core of your data center or in the cloud. But the reality is that the world is shifting to the edge. And here is a short video to give you some insight from our experts at HP Point X, what it means the edge. So let's roll the video. In a digitally transformed world, the next wave of innovation happens at the edge. Transform your customer experiences. Drive more productivity. Accelerate your entire operation. How do you bring it all together and harness the value of the data at the edge so that intelligence gives rise to action? Over 43% of IoT data will be analyzed at the edge. Context-aware technologies in the digital workplace boost productivity. And 20 billion new devices will be connected by 2020. HPE Point Next brings the know-how to create intelligent spaces, digital workplaces, and puts IoT into action. How? Establishing context-aware factories, offices, airports, shopping centers, hospitals, and more. Using innovations from secure Wi-Fi and location-based services to IoT platforms, powered by edge computing and our partners. With an intelligent edge behind your enterprise, anything is possible. Tom Bittman from Gartner said it best, the edge will eat the cloud. And actually, we agree with him. Data the edge is generated everywhere. In places like factories, hospitals, wind parks, cars, you name it. Sensors and mobile devices capture this data, but it is a significant challenge in how you keep up with the volume, bring it all together, and make sure it's secure, and ultimately, more importantly, extract the value from it. By 2019, up to 43% of 
IoT data will be analyzed at the edge. Think about that. We were not even thinking, we weren't even talking about that just a few years ago. But with these challenges comes great opportunity. When we harness the value of that data and the applications at the edge, we are able to transform that customer experience as well as the deliver of new products, services, and operations. Again, it is all about time to value. HP solutions for the edge powered by HP Aruba mobile and universal IoT offerings seamlessly connect people, things at the edge, applications that it can improve the way we live and work every single day. And here to tell you more about how HP wants to help you win at the edge, let me welcome the head of HP Aruba, Kirti Melkote. Kirti? Thank you, Antonio. Good afternoon. It's super exciting to be in Discover with in Vegas with all of you. And before I share our strategy for powering the intelligent edge, what I thought I'd do is, is give you a quick update on Aruba itself. As the founder of Aruba, our dream 15 years ago when we started the company was that wireless would become the de facto means of connecting everyone and everything. That was an era where mobile devices didn't exist. It was primarily laptops. And um, what we built was, a, was the industry's most secure wireless networking platform. And, the, and on the strength of that, we were able to go public and become the largest pure play provider of wireless networking solutions for the enterprise. Two years ago, when we came together with HP into the HPE family, what we started to work on was integrating the Aruba wireless assets with HP's wired assets to create the industry's only mobile-first networking platform for the enterprise. And it is going to be branded Aruba end-to-end, -end, Aruba Wireless, Aruba Wired, coming together with Aruba software to create the mobile-first networking platform. Now, thanks to all of you embracing us, embracing this architecture, we have become the fastest growing provider now of edge networking solutions in the industry. We have consistently grown 25 to 30% year over year over the last seven quarters that we've been a part of the HPE family. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for embracing us so warmly. What I want to talk about, I think what is even more interesting beyond our growth is really what you're doing with our technology. And, and really it is very gratifying to see the kinds of experiences, insights, and transformations that you, our customers, are putting to work using our technologies. I think the best way to think about it and talk about it is through our customers. And so first, I want to talk to you about uh, a customer that we have on the East Coast, Travelers Insurance, a very large insurance agency. And they came to us with, with a simple problem statement. They started to talk about, we are going to move into a new facility and the millennials are becoming an increasingly important part of our workforce. So how could we bring um, a new mobile workplace for these millennials that increases collaboration, increases productivity at the edge of the network? And so what we were able to do was create that all wireless workplace where we got rid of specific desks and workstations. The traditional architectures required us to pull cables to everyone's desk you know, powering that workstation, powering a telephone, a desk phone, maybe a printer, and so on. And what we started to talk about is, let's get rid of all those cables. Let's create a mobile office where your smartphones, your tablets, your laptops become the means of connecting and communicating with your colleagues, and also open up the floor plan so you're much more easier, uh, easily able to collaborate with your teams. And we did this in partnership with Microsoft. Microsoft Skype for Business tool is the mobile communications tool of choice, working on top of the Aruba Mobile First platform. And together, we are delivering this open collaborative workspace for traveler's insurance. This is a conversation I'm having with a number of customers. In fact, every other conversation, it seems like we're talking about the next generation digital workplace that is powered by mobility. But I think that talks about the employee experience and how employee experiences are actually changing. What is even more interesting is how this technology is being put to use to improve business outcomes. 
And we are beginning to see this in the context of customers that have public-facing footprint, retailers, stadiums, hotels, hospitals, and on and on. And also using the technology to improve operational experiences in the context of smart factories, oil rigs, and the like. So to, 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 to actually talk through a little bit of this with you, I would like to invite Steve McGaugh, uh, Chief Marketing Officer of AT&T Business, who has been our alliance partner developing our solution for the public-facing enterprises. Steve. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you on board here. Oh, it's so good to be here. What a great opportunity. Amazing audience. Well, AT&T is no stranger to Aruba. We've been innovating for a while now. That's true. And uh, we've been in market together for a while. So it'll be right. great to give the audience a sense of what we've been up to together. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, we started with you many years ago. Wi-Fi has truly evolved. You know, as I think about it, it's, it's a wireless LAN that does two big things for most of our business customers, what I've found. Uh, one is make it super easy for their customers, our business customers' customers, uh, to communicate and, and for their customers to surf the web, et cetera. And then second is the back office side of the equation. Uh, all in a highly secure, managed, in-building connectivity for employees, visitors, and the applications that ride on top of it. So AT&T's Wi-Fi solution, which uses Aruba from the early days all the way through today and, and on into the future, it enables new customer experiences, really powerful ones, and gives businesses the agility. I've heard the word agility many times today. You know, agility on how businesses operate, how salespeople connect, how equipment can be monitored and managed, and, and candidly, it's a platform that can run core operations. You know, when I think about it, it's about connecting people and things yep. and improving the operational effectiveness so that companies can make changes on the fly, right, with end-to-end uh, -end connectivity and visibility. And, and because of the, the power of the combination here, we have lots of insights of what's happening inside the Wi-Fi territory and then outside the building when they're on the wide area network so we can connect those dots and do analytics so that operations and marketing, et cetera, can be done even more effectively. So it's things, people, management, insights. It's all possible because of the power of our two companies working together. You know, we, we pick our partners very carefully. And, and one of the things about Aruba is that we have great alignment. You know, you have a very great entrepreneurial spirit for one thing. You're innovative in the technology and the business models, like I heard Meg talking about earlier. And, and your approach is open and you know, non-proprietary, software-centric, flexible in nature. And we're bringing these solutions to market together so that our customers have a single team, a single point of contact. It's truly the power of AND. It's been fascinating. It's really great to see the, the traction that we're experiencing in the market. In fact, last year, uh, the CIO of Home Depot, yep. Matt Carey, was here on stage with, with Meg talking about his choice of using Aruba to modernize his store footprint. Um, you're our partner there delivering right. the solution to them. So give us an update on how it's gone. Oh, it's, it's gone great. I mean, it's an amazing, you know, opportunity for us and for the Home Depot, for us together. You know, if you think about it, the Home Depot wanted agility for its core operations, but it also wanted a great experience for its customers while they're in the store. They wanted a fully managed wireless LAN solution and a seamless experience. And if you think about it, for 10,000, over 10,000 endpoints throughout the US and Canada, I mean, it's a massive deployment. And we're talking about everything from cash registers to people to paint kiosks. And the Home Depot used AT&T with HP Aruba uh, to provide a complete solution. You know, highly secure, highly reliable. It's helping them reduce their cost structure and provide a great experience for their customers while they're shopping. So, so great partnership between AT&T and HPE Aruba. Yeah, so, so bringing that back office and the front office, engaging the, the customer when they walk into Home Depot digitally, which has never happened Absolutely. before. Absolutely. 
So I think Home Depot is just the tip of the iceberg. We are seeing a lot more interest right. in our solution. So tell us a little bit more about other customers that are leveraging this solution together. Well, one example is Landry's, and I think many people in here, maybe most people know who Landry's is. It's a Houston-based, diversified restaurant, entertainment, gaming, uh, you know, hospitality company. They have over 500 restaurants around the globe big names like Morton's and Chart House and Saltgrass and of course Landry Seafood. And as their business evolved, they wanted, this is gonna sound very common, an enhanced customer experience and great operational efficiencies. So AT&T's Wi-Fi solution with Aruba, we delivered the features, the support, the management control. And so now Landry's has a wireless LAN uh, in each of their locations with a great guest Wi-Fi experience. But also, so that's for the public internet, but then they also need a protected environment for their loyalty applications, their mobile inventory, their point of sale, their seating applications, their payment applications. You know, and it's all wrapped with a great customer management portal. Uh, that provides the flexibility, the control, the insights, remote configurations, all the things you would expect them to want, all with the support and backing of AT&T and HPE Aruba. Yeah, it's truly the power of hand, as you said, right? <laughs> yes, Coming indeed. together. Um, so tell us what's in the future. Where do we go from here? Well, you know, just like your business and our business, you know, it feels like the pace is accelerating and the volatility is there. And I mean, it, it's great, but it's moving very fast. And companies need the agility to compete and win in their respective industries. So we're gonna continue to invest, continue to lean in, keep innovating with you uh, around new products and solutions. W the goal is enable our customers, our joint customers, with a competitive advantage so that they can win in their respective industries. It's a great combination, AT&T and Aruba. Absolutely, very well said, Steve. Thank you okay. so much, it's great to Thank have you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. So that, that's an example of what we're doing to helping customers truly use the network, not just as a, as a cost center, but a revenue enhancing, revenue generating proposition. Um, now, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some innovations that we're introducing at the show here. So far, what I touched on is the mobile-first platform at the edge, integrating the wired networking and the wireless networking together in a single architecture. But there's one portion of the network that hasn't be, seen a lot of innovation in the last couple of decades, and that is the core of the campus network itself. This is typically occupied by a catalyst switch. Right. And I was back in Cisco back in the day when I built that pop box, and it served its purpose. It's been there 20 years serving the core. And what's happened is the world has moved on. We've moved to a mobile-first world, and the core hasn't changed. So what we did at HP Aruba is to bring together all the innovation that we have done at the edge to address it to the core of the network itself. I'm super excited to introduce our next generation core switching platform, the Aruba 8400. Let's roll the video. That's the 8400. What that helps us do, helps you do, is be able to build out an entire footprint, a campus across multiple buildings into a single architecture, a single architecture that is controlled, managed, and secured using the same software. I think the most interesting development here is not just the hardware, it's fantastic, has all the right speeds and feeds, but I think the most innovative thing here is really the software. We built, we had to build basically an operating system from scratch that we're calling Aruba OS CX, which allows you to take this box and integrate it into your workflows in a very seamless way. It is built to be API first. Think of the software is basically a cloud app running inside a box, completely built to be horizontally scalable, 
allows you to integrate into anything that you may have from a workflow standpoint. And most importantly, it's got an analytics engine built in because all your traffic flows through a core switch like this. We now have the ability to peek into that traffic and extract insights, performance insights, and security insights as to what's actually happening inside your network. So we're super excited about this. And this box is available for viewing and for test driving out on the show floor. So when you get a moment, please do stop by. Now, I want to turn the attention from Aruba OS CX, which is a very large innovation, to a very small innovation, and I'm only referring to its size now. Um, the Aruba Mobile First platform is a networking platform, but it also delivers application value. And one of the unique things that we can do with the Mobile First platform is to track the location of people by tracking the location of, of your mobile devices as you walk around in a facility. What we did was to take that location intelligence and transform that into a little asset tag, which sits in the palm of your hand. You can take this, and as you want to track things, and I'm talking about IoT here, anything that is a valuable asset for you inside your organization, you can track the movement of that as it goes through your different aspects of your organization, right? An example is healthcare. If you look at a hospital, high value assets are medical devices. High value assets are wheelchairs, uh, stretchers, IV pumps. There's all sorts of things out there that have wheels and move around. And in hospital context, uh, they tend to actually get parked in closets because nurses want to be able to find them quickly. Well, the thing is, and because they can't find them, the hospital is forced to buy these expensive medical devices, increase the purchase of it. By attaching asset tags to those devices, you can now instantly search using a mobile app and spend less time searching for your assets and spend more time serving your patients, which is really what the business is about. So super excited. And, and the most interesting thing here is that you don't need a parallel network. Asset tracking used to require a proprietary separate network to deploy. Now the same network that serves your customers, your employees, also doubles up as your IoT network, tracking the things as they move inside your facility. So that's a little bit about the innovations that, that we've brought to the table. And as IoT becomes increasingly important, it's a very major focus for us. It's not just about tracking things, it's also about creating sense out of the data that IoT sensors are going to actually generate. And to give you a sense of this, I'd like to bring Dr. Tom Bradish to talk about what we are doing in the edge computing arena. The term intelligent edge is used in many ways, but the best way to think of it is as a place. It's a place that's not the data center or the cloud. It's a manufacturing floor, a building, a campus, a city, your house, a crop field, a power plant, an oil rig, a sports arena, in your car or under the sea. It's everywhere everything is and where the things are in the internet of things or the IoT. The edge is where the action is. Now the edge is intelligent because today there's technology in these places that's connected, computational, and controlling, or the three C's. And these three are tightly coupled with security protection and end-to-end -end services. Security is built right in from the beginning, and we do this with the Aruba ClearPass and the R technologies for connectivity, as well as our HPE ArcSight and ILO security for the compute and control applications. So it's end-to-end, -end, and it also includes the universal IoT platform, which spans control and management from edge all the way to the core data center. And our HPE PointNext services complete the picture from concept, POC, deployment, and operations. Now, very crucially, the Intelligent Edge houses analytics and insights right at the point of data capture. And when we compute at the edge, we accelerate insight and hence faster action and control. This also affords higher reliability and lower bandwidth costs and bandwidth usage. And with the HPE Edge Line Converged Edge Systems, we can now take high performance Intel Xeon computing which was formerly confined on-premise or in cloud data centers, and we unleash it and shift it out to the edge. And while we're there, we also integrate operational technologies, or OT, such as control systems, data acquisition systems, and industrial networks, right in the same box as the EdgeLine systems. Now let me share some examples of what's possible when we bring connectivity, computing, and control with security and services out to the intelligent edge. 
a retail store, network connects, cold drinks, and digital price displays on its shelves. Now the retailer can instantly track inventory and see how long it takes for drinks to sell. This information computed with outside temperatures and sales data from other locations can be used to control drink prices and optimize inventory in real time. In this IoT application, the drinks and price displays are things connected and controlled. The retailer now maximizes sales, minimizes shipping costs, and enables the new customer experiences. And very exciting is the refinery of the future, which transforms operations in chemical plants. We're pioneering convergence of OT and IT, and this makes less things to buy, less things to deploy, and less to operate. Thank you, Dr. Tom. And as you can see, he is obviously very passionate about this whole IoT space. And, and hopefully you're getting now a sense of what we're doing at the Intelligent Ed. We are taking the, the mobile-first networking platform, the Aruba mobile-first networking platform, along with the edge computing portfolio, bringing that together into a powerful combination to enable all the analytics and the big data intelligence that's going to power insights at the Intelligent Edge. Let me now thank you for the time. And before I leave you, I want to tee you up with a video of a customer, Techsmart Chemicals, that is on a journey to build the refinery of the future. Take a look. Techsmart creates the most talented, world-class operator out there. So it's just so fitting that we would bring machines to Techsmart so they too can learn. Pumps are the heart or the lifeblood of our business. If a critical pump goes down, it may shut the whole operation down. If we can predict that, we see great cost savings. The notion of preventative maintenance and predictive analytics, that sort of crystal ball look into the future is absolutely invaluable. As I'm planning a project or a turnaround and I'm accounting for human resources, parts, schedule, budget, all of that, if I can make a perfect plan based on perfect future information, then all of those savings will translate to our customers. The refinery of the future opportunities allows us to leverage an ecosystem of partners. With HPE providing the backbone, we have Aruba, who's providing a wireless mesh network. National Instruments is providing the sensing elements. OSI Soft does data historian, and DXC and many other partners who are coming as a direct consequence of the HPE position in the industry and their ability to work with Texmark. What HPE and Aruba bring to us is that we can take in that data and crunch the numbers quickly to help us manage things real time in the plant. And rather than having to go talk to 100 pumps, our pump whisperers are just talking to the one and they're focusing their energy where we need it. The ideal refinery of the future can cull through the data that's meaningful and not meaningful and have an understanding of how the entire plant is interconnected. It almost becomes organic, this sort of living, breathing plant. We have to be nimble, and being able to employ this sort of technology, we believe, gives us that competitive edge. Let's give a round of applause to Kirti, Dr. Tom, and Steve. You know, um, Aruba was the first acquisition Meg and I did, and I have to tell you, we are incredible, lucky, and proud to have Kirti and the team and that the engineering community that brought a total different way to think about innovation. I'm not sure you got all the things that Kirti said, but I thought I will emphasize one because it's a very important message. One of the innovations he talked about it, the Aruba 8400. Ladies and gentlemen, today you are catalyst free. That's what you're going to take. At the campus, you don't need any more Cisco, it's all Aruba you can be catalyst free. And that's a massive accomplishment. Now, as you have seen, massive amount of data are generated at the edge. And as we all know quite well, it is all about the apps and the data. 
This is where the value really lies and where every transformation journey has to begin. So let's watch another short video from our expert at HP Point Next to give you more insights into our unique point of view around data. A digital world is an impatient world and it's driven by data for insight, for experiences, for actions. If data is the fuel of everything, how do you build the engine? Every two years, the human race creates more data than in all of history combined. The first exascale computer will be built by 2022. It will be as powerful as all the top 500 computers today combined. By 2020, the driver assistance systems of 10 million self-driving cars will produce 40,000 petabytes of data every day. 10,000 times more data than 2 billion active Facebook users create in one day. HPE Point Next can help you build your next generation data and analytics engine today. Integrate with your current data and systems. Put IoT into action with AI and machine learning. Deliver the right mix today and tomorrow with memory-driven computing. The next era of big data is here. That's how we think about the future, but really to truly be successful in today's complicated hybrid world, we need more intelligence, means to utilize that data. And of using predictive technologies and analytics to put that data in action. This means moving from simply programming systems to train them, teaching them to think and act on their own. When actually we do this, the possibilities are limitless. And to demonstrate what I mean, I want to share a super cool use case that comes from one of our customers. And since we are here in Las Vegas, I thought this was going to really resonate with you. It's about the poker, which actually Las Vegas is the poker capital of the world. And the story is particularly fitting because when you think about it, I think you, you're going to understand what we're doing here, and, and I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's play the video. I'm not that good a poker player, and I didn't really play poker before we started to do this, but I've been watching this artificial intelligence for 14 years, so I learned a thing or two. I know some things that some of the pros don't. I'm Tuomas Sandholm. I'm a professor here at Carnegie Mellon University. I've been working on artificial intelligence since 1989. Poker is a great benchmark because it is a huge game. It has 10 to the power of 161 different situations. That's more than the number of atoms in the universe. And even if you had for every atom in the universe a whole other universe and calculated those atoms, it would still be more than that too. So really to do serious research in the area, you do need to use a supercomputer. I'm Nick Nystrom. I'm the director of research at the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. One of our recent initiatives with Professor Tuma Sandholm is to really set a system where he can test and demonstrate an artificial intelligence he's been developing for competing against the world's top human poker players. And we designed a custom topology just to make this kind of AI possible. The reason that we chose Hewlett Packard Enterprise was really their depth. We were trying to build a system that would let people do things they've never done before. And those problems require very large shared memory. In Bridges, we have HP Integrity Superdome X servers with 12 terabytes of random access memory each. We also have 800 Apollo 2000 servers and HPE DL580 three terabyte servers. And so bringing all those different components together was essential to Bridges. The algorithms that run on the supercomputer come up with their own strategy for playing the game. They don't take any data as original input. They just compute from the rules of the game and figure out their own strategies. In January, we ran this Brains versus AI competition, where we brought in four of the top 10 Heads Up No Limit Texas Hold'em professional players. Initially, the players were doing quite well. We're like, we figured this out. It has these holes. We're going to take it on. And then it improved. In a few days, Labradas learned what they were doing. It closed those holes. It limps. It min raises. It raises to 2.5. Most people, when they play, they only raise. Some people like limp and raise. To do this much pre-flop variation, it's not something that any human would be able to do. As the players found more holes, Labratus identified those. Just in Labratus fashion, he two, hits two pair on the river. We beat them by 14.7 big blinds per hundred. That was the first time AI had been able to beat top human players. And that's really exciting because the test of artificial intelligence is when can it surpass humans? In theory, there 
is a way to beat it, but we just don't know how. How cool was that? Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be allowed to use it here in Las Vegas. <laughs> now, let me tell you, what you just saw is a supercomputer that can beat the best world-class poker players. And, he's, and he was able to win because he figured out how to bluff, right? That's artificial intelligence. I'm, you know, this is truly amazing, an incredible step forward for supercomputing and artificial intelligence. But this is just a glimpse of what is in store. Imagine what our world will be like in the years ahead as we continue on this path. And to give you a deeper look at the innovation we are driving in a groundbreaking area, which I'm particularly very excited about it, um, you know, I would like to turn the stage to one of our visionaries about the future. But before I do so, I would like to thank you, all of you, for your time today, for joining us here in Las Vegas. And I hope you get an understanding of what Hewlett Packard can do for you. Nothing, nothing is more important to us than our customers. And I want to sincerely thank you for your support to our business. And with that, please join me in welcoming the Chief Architect of Hewlett Packard Enterprise Lab, Kirk Bresnicker. Bresnicker. We live in an impatient world. As you heard Meg say, time to value is everything. But how do you get to that value? By speeding, time to learning, time to result, time to publish, time to trade, time to product, time to advise, time to insight, time to experience, and time to action. The definition of real time is changing. The old world analyzes the past and it gives us hindsight. Real time means analyzing the new while it is still new. Real time means insight and foresight. Walmart. Their transactional database is about 40 petabytes. And with that data, they change not just the face, but the entire practice of in-store retail. By May of 2016, Facebook was processing four petabytes of data every day. That's the size of the Walmart database every 10 days. And with that data, they changed the way the world communicates. But we're about to take another, another leap in magnitude, the amount of data available to give us insight. By 2020, the driver assistance systems alone of the 10 million autonomous cars will generate 40,000 petabytes of data every day. And that's just the self-driving cars. We'll be generating that level of data from IoT sensors all over our cyber physical world. And the question is, can you capitalize on this data explosion? 99% of the data that's created at the edge is discarded today. When we decide what to keep and what to lose, we introduce bias and bias precludes new insights. Raw data is priceless. Everywhere that someone works out how to use just a little more of that data to gain real-time insights, entire industries will be remade or unmade. Will it be you or will it be your competition? There's a challenge, a problem in achieving this. Every two years, we're creating as much new data as we did in all of recorded history. And we've kept up till now, but our ambitions are growing faster than our computers can improve. We needed something different, and we have done something different. 
Three years ago on this stage, we announced The Machine, our research project to reinvent computing. We've built the biggest single memory system with 160 terabytes of fast memory. We came with promises three years ago, and now I have prototype and proof. It works. We call this architecture memory-driven computing. What can you achieve if you throw away 60 years of convention and compromise? By surgically modifying a few lines of legacy code, we sped up Apache Spark 15 times. By replacing computation with memory reference and lookup, we sped up similarity search 40 times. By writing new large-scale graph inference algorithms, we achieved two orders of magnitude improvement 100 times. And when we completely rethought the Monte Carlo algorithms underpinning financial risk modeling, we achieved an almost incredible 10,000 times improvement. These are the kinds of results that transform industries, moving offline calculation hindsight to real-time insight. We achieved all of this on our HPE Superdome X systems. So you can start with memory-driven computing today. When we announced, we knew it had to be bigger than us. We knew we wanted to have that conversation and we knew we wanted to collaborate. As an example, a leading medical research institute came to us to help them overcome intractable compute challenges in their search for a cure for Alzheimer's disease using memory-driven computing. And I'm thrilled to welcome to the stage Professor Pierre-Luigi Nicotera and Professor Joachim Schulze from DZNE the German Center for Neurodegenerative Disease Research. Thank you. Professors, can you tell me a bit about the DZNE mission? Well, the DZNE is an organization funded by the German government to understand, to try to find strategies for prevention and care of neurodegenerative diseases, particularly Alzheimer's disease, which is, of course, a major uh, problem for our society, particularly for Western society, but it's becoming a problem worldwide. And the idea is to bring together the very best brains in Germany and with colleagues around the world in collaboration to try to solve the problem. For the next uh, few years, we expect very intensive research, which is based on a number of data coming from fundamental research, but also from clinical population studies, which means a huge amount of heterogeneous data that need to be understood and put together to solve a complex disease. And what led you to memory-driven computing? So uh, we're, we're talking about big data now in, in medicine. So we have the genomic data, we have imaging data, we're looking at the brain, we have a lot of data where we follow patients for 30 years, maybe. 30,000 patients where we want to learn about the disease. And um, so we need a lot of memory backs, basically. We need to access this data all the time. That's when we want to bring them together is absolutely necessary. So when we learned on the internet about the machine, which was open on YouTube, we said that's exactly what we need. We need basically a, an architecture where the data is in the middle where we can put our medical data in and can access it all the time to calculate faster and integrative. That was how it happened. And what have we achieved so far? Well, actually, we started uh, practically two weeks ago, and so we don't have too much time yet. And uh, the first results are actually quite encouraging because we speed up calculations for genomic data up to nine times. So with two weeks uh, <laughs> on, on our uh, um, sort of, you know, role, uh, I think that uh, this may uh, hope for a huge, tremendous advance in the future. So two weeks and you got 9x improvement. What's next? So 
you know, we have only started to have a very tiny piece of our pipeline when we analyze genomic data, and the pipeline is much longer, and we have already nine times faster. So we think at least in the genomics field, we can go even 100 times faster when we really leash all what's possible. And then we go beyond that. We want to integrate genomic data. We want to integrate with imaging data, with the patient's history, with their drug data, and so on. And this basically goes beyond what we're doing right now. So we see a very, very bright future for this collaboration. Well, thank you, professors. As someone who has experienced coping with these diseases in my own family, I thank you so much for your work, for our collaboration, and for helping me tell this story to our HPE Discover audience. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Thank you. So the question is, what path do you want to go down? Do you want to go down a conventional path that will lead to a dead end? Or do you want to go on a path that extends far into our shared future? Hewlett Packard Enterprise is the company that has your future taken care of. You're here today with the company that is defining the next waves of computing. You're seeing history being made, and you're a part of it. I invite you all, come to the Hewlett Packard Labs Pavilion, meet the technologists that have been given the opportunity to realize their dreams and their visions. Thank you. And now, Welcome back, Meg. Thank you, everyone. Give Kurt a big round of applause. Fantastic. Pretty cool, right? It's remarkable what these guys have been doing. Well, we're nearing the end, and I hope it is really clear to you where Hewlett Packard Enterprise is heading. We believe the future of IT is becoming very clear. It will be a hybrid world fueled by apps and data from the core of your data center to the edge to multiple clouds. You will move more intelligence and compute power to the edge of the network to take advantage of the Internet of Things and extract insight and business value closer to where that data is created. It will be a world where everything computes, generating data and knowledge at scale we've never seen before. But it certainly will not be one size fits all. What matters most is finding the right mix for your company. What combination gives you the best chance to compete and win? And we built Hewlett Packard Enterprise to help you do just that. To provide the systems and infrastructure that make it all possible, the software that makes it work and gives you greater agility and flexibility, and the networking that connects it, connects it all with intelligence and security, and the expertise to help you find the right mix of product and solutions and the right consumption pricing models to meet your very specific and unique needs. And we can pull it all together for you, helping, to, for you, helping you design, helping you deploy and maintain a solution that is secure from the start optimized to every workload, ready to scale, and built for agility and speed. That is our commitment to you and the promise that drives everything we do at the company. So I want to thank you again for your business and the time you've invested to join us for Discover. And importantly, I also want to give a big shout out and a special thank you to the sponsors who helped make this event possible. To our diamond sponsor, Intel. Give Intel a round of applause. They have been a great partner for us. Our platinum sponsors, AMD, CenturyLink, Citrix, our sibling, DXC Technology, PwC, Tata Consulting, T Tech Data, and Veeam. And to all our gold, silver, and bronze sponsors and our kiosk sponsors, thank you very much. You are all an incredibly important part of Discover, and you make it a richer experience for all of us. And bef yes, one more round of applause for the, for the sponsors. Thank you very much. And before you leave, I hope you can use Discover to capitalize on any of the opportunities that we talked about today. 
please go out to the transformation zone and talk to our teams. Bring us your toughest problems, and I promise you we'll do everything we can to rise to the occasion and help you plot your own journey. So thank you again for coming. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and we look forward to seeing you in Madrid, Spain in, uh, in December at Discover. Thank you very much. That was CEO Meg Whitman leaving the stage at the general session, people filing out now. After about two hours from Meg Whitman and her leadership team addressing what is going on in this industry and hearing over and over again about speed and scale and the size of data. A lot of interesting topics here coming up. Meg Whitman talking about being in the cloud but also being at the edge the Internet of Things, something that we heard a number of times. Uh, being mobile first also, again, that speaks to all this data that's going to be out there. Uh, you might uh, remember also some parts of artificial intelligence specifically about a project where uh, the artificial intelligence learned how to beat some poker players, that it's getting that good, but that it actually needs so much hardware and supercomputing to get to that level. And that is what HPE says that they can deliver. Uh, also trying to make themselves uh, in terms of IT, not just a cost center, but also bringing in revenue. We heard about that a couple of times as well. And again, this idea that the pace is accelerating, uh, not just the pace of how we are changing our technology, but the pace that we are getting and creating more data. Uh, talking about uh, the, the petabytes that are going to be created by autonomous vehicles by the year 2020. It's hard to get your mind around the scale. Phil, uh, I don't know if you had trouble figuring out uh, really how large all the data we're delivering is. I know you were in the audience there. Uh, give us some of your highlights. Well, there was one uh, sentence that really stood out for me, Jen. It was repeated at the end, and it was how Meg Whitman opened the show, and that was businesses will thrive in a world where everything computes. And that was really the core message here. HBE's core belief is that we live in a hybrid world. There's no choice about the matter. We have to adapt, uh, especially if you have an enterprise, a business that you want to succeed, you have to adapt. There's no way you can be left behind. She said, we make hybrid IT simple. And she talked about partnerships with other companies and how hybrid IT is helping uh, other companies. Uh, there was a lot of talk, as you say, about the intellig intelligent edge. One of the big things here, you know, the, we've been told that the key to innovation lies at the intelligent edge of the network. And she described this as the world outside your data center. You know, she said, people ask, what is the intelligent edge? It's not a physical thing, it is a place. It's your factory floor, it's the hospital, it's the factory, it's the workplace, it's the store where all of that data is captured and where all of that data needs to be analyzed. And data has to be captured at the edge. It has to be captured soon, quickly, so that it can be analyzed and it can be turned into insights and actions to keep HPE supporting businesses at the forefront. So there's a couple of things. We also heard from DCIG talking about the Generation 10 servers. That was the big announcement that we teed up before we were told that Generation 10 server is one of the most, or is the most secure server in the world. But just to recap, as I repeat, as Meg Whitman closed the show, businesses will thrive in a world where everything computes. So that is HPE Discover 2017, the general session from Jen Rogers in the studio and from me, Phil Lavelle, on the show floor. Thanks for your company. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.